and while I was home I picked up my phone and I texted this guy that I really loved so much that I'd imagined my whole future with that has not done me any wrong that has changed his lifestyle because of me that has made decisions to in my favor that has made decisions because of me that had se- that I seen his whole life with me in it and I told him God asked me to break up with you outside and this is what outside looks like <laughs> So here comes the story. I'm going to try as much as possible to be detailed about it. And just before I start this story, I need to say disclaimer. This is just my personal story. This is not the scripture. This is not exactly your life. This is not what exactly is going to happen to you. I just hope you pick a couple of things through this story. And um, I hope it blesses you. Amen. My name is Teresa and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Please, I really need to ask that you please subscribe and please watch this video to the end. Additionally, I would also ask that you please like this video and drop your comments. <laughs> Thank you. I gave my life to Christ um, after I wrote my YA. This is just like a background story. So whenever I mention a couple of things, you know where I was coming from. Was starting to call me by like different ways i'm going to actually mention that i will leave this video edit unedited like i'm not going to edit it so much so just so that i don't end up cutting out anything i didn't plan to start this story i just said i'm going to say whatever is in my heart and how well i remember this story i wrote my work <coughs> i was this was the period where i gave my life to christ because i felt with so much pain so i gave my life to christ in 2015 after i had left christ in secondary school actually before i wrote i got to secondary school if, now when i look back at, at it i discovered that god was actually working in me but i actually hadn't gotten to that place that i was going to be like oh i really need to go through with god um in every matter of my life so yeah so just to mention that anyway so it happened that after I gave my life to Christ, I failed work, so I wrote work twice. I refused to cheat all of a sudden. It was not like me, but then God was working in me, as I mentioned. And I just felt that cheating was not something Jesus was going to like. So <laughs> I said, no cheating for me. I wrote my work and I failed. So I cried a lot. I cried a lot. I cried, cried a lot. And after some time, like I got a job and I was working so from work i would go back to write rewrite my work and like take lessons and all of those things because i feel math yeah i got a d 2016 i got admission into a federal university it's federal university of Turkey in Bayesa state in nigeria so during this period i got into school i was a new convert i love god so much and i was just new into the faith just to give you the background story that i didn't know so much However, I was going through things with, why is this cat coming this close? I was like a really devout Christian girl at this point. I made some consecrations. I stopped wearing trousers throughout my secondary school, throughout my university days. I wasn't cheating, you know, like just little, little things because I was just so careful on my work with God because I just got, I just got saved. I mean, and I knew that it was going to be a lot. So the first point where I had to drop something that was much, 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 much like mean a lot to me was especially with my dress sense. I love to wear things that were skimpy. I love to wear like trousers that were tight. And when I'm not dressing like this, I love to dress like a boy. So God started to speak to me about the way I dressed. And it was so hard thinking that, oh, you're not going to wear trousers, especially what was so easy to wear. I had to like change a lot of things. My mom was so supportive at this point. So she had to start like buying new clothes for me and things like that. So this was the part that struck me the most because I'd imagine what my university days was going to be. I was going to dress like real houts. Houts. <laughs> I was going to dress really houts. <laughs> but now God was telling me that 
the way I was dressing was not something he was really pleased with. So this was the first thing like I really needed to drop and I really really needed to part ways with and it really broke my heart. But later moving on, I started like wearing gowns and I really liked it and I felt like oh god, anyway, I looked a bit good and <laughs> I really liked it and it just passed the message to some people, especially some people that would still call me more than Mary to today, not because of I was holy or anything, but because of the way I dressed so it happened that um, when i got into school i was focused i wanted to like read i had two friends at this point and these were my two friends to the day i left school so i met this guy one day and before this time i've told myself i was not going to date while i was in the university because i knew i was not going to get married my father was not going to give me out in marriage while i'm in the university so what's the point <laughs> this is just very peculiar to me i met somebody one day while i went to photocopy and this was this is going to be the guy in this whole story and i didn't meet him so close i met him far off because i knew him from where you know the way they come to like university now in nigeria you come seniors will be like greatest gigi greatest gaga you know this kind of thing i met him once like this he was trying to like get people to vote for his friend that was going for an SUG position i'm not really sure but i think it was something like that so i really like admired this guy but the only reason i admired this guy was the fact that i'd heard before now that he was a first class student and he was stopping his department and his department was my department so this was the only interest i had at this point however one day when i was walking i met him by the cyber cafe and while i met him i didn't know at that point i felt it was my head that was asking me that question but i really did hear that question will you date this person and I told myself, I had said I was not going to date in school and I was not going to date this person. I didn't even know how this even get to my head. Dating somebody at that time? How did this question ever come? <laughs> so that was aside. And we started to go for tutorials. I did not participate in his tutorial, although I knew his tutorial was going on and it was free or you had to pay like a token. But I had another person that was teaching us. I and my friends. We had another person that was teaching us. And we had to like pay a certain amount of money for the whole semester. So this guy was teaching us. And sometimes we just go to this other guy. Because sometimes he's free. So this was going on for some time. And when I... Um, I'm, after some time, this other guy that was teaching us actually stopped because he was about graduating. Or he had graduated at this point. So we had no choice than to be going to the other guy's own. So most times I do go to the um, school on Saturdays and I read throughout the whole day, more like throughout the whole afternoon. And most times I get to see these people and their classes and sometimes I join. So I could remember one day when he was in a class and he was talking to some people and he mentioned that he got like a 4.8 GPA and I was like, wow, how can somebody ever have that kind of GPA? I had this number stored in my phone as 200 level cost rep because he would write his phone number on the board in case anybody had any question or anything for the people that he was teaching so that they can call him or like do anything. I didn't have any personal relationship with him. However, when I was in 200 level, I got a 5.0 GPA and he was the one that reached out to me once to help teach somebody once and the other time was to help in a scholarship exam this was how i got to know him like he knows me and i know him it was during the scholarship exam and after that that was it in fact i became a little bit closer to his friend than i was to him and at this point i could remember one day he gave a call to me i was the coordinator of my my students i was the coordinator of a christian group actually so we're preparing for a crusade and i could remember while i was there that early morning like trying to get things all organized he called me that he really needed my help in that scholarship exam so i took a bike went to the place where they were having this exam it was like an online application thing it's not really like an exam that he said hello <laughs> that he sat down to write or something like that so i really went there that day and i helped and after i helped that day now he has my number i have his number he felt like i really did something nice for him and i felt it was not something he really needed to bother or say thank you so much for 
Fast forward to 300 level. Now he was on his IT and I was about going into 300 level. So I didn't know what happened. But I knew the first day we ever spoke was like really, really speak. Because after I helped him in 200 level, we became like good friends, but not really like perfectly close friends. So it happened that in two, okay, not 2000 and something. Now I was going to end, go into 300 level. So one day I saw this guy text me and he texted me and asked, have you seen this movie? And I said, no. And then he asked me, and then, sorry, he told me that this movie is about a guy and a girl that were friends, but that the, they were, they were not socializing. They were they were not going out to have like fun with their friends. They only read their books. And he told me that he felt that's the kind of person that I am. That he just wants to give me an advice. That he could remember the first day he went for a party in school. That everybody was shouting tutorial master, tutorial master. And it was a bit embarrassing to him because before now he had never gone for any of these kind of activities. And now he had to go there for the first time because he was invited and everybody just felt that it was only book that he knows and he told me he just needed to advise me that i should loosen up a bit like i should engage with people i should speak to people i should socialize with people and i should not always have my book sorry i should not always have my head in the book that that was the advice and i told him thank you and i could remember dropping that phone that day and i tell telling myself that i like myself the way i am it's so funny. I remember telling myself, I like myself the way I am. Please, nobody should come and disturb me. Say hello, my name is Teresa and welcome back to my YouTube channel. <laughs> this is so funny. But I just need to remind you, please like, please subscribe and please stay till the end. Thank you. To tell you how much I didn't really care about what this person's life was like. This person, I think he was dating someone else and i had my distance kept but it happened that we started talking about things somehow um i think he and the person broke up at some point and then we were just talking to be fair and to be very honest with you just because i'm trying to be very sincere in case this is going to help anybody at all is the fact that i didn't have anything in my mind like i didn't at this point i didn't think i liked this person i didn't think this person liked me i just felt that he was my senior and i usually used to call him at the point i was calling him sir dave and at some point i was calling him brother dave but at this point i'm still talking about now i was calling him brother dave and he was calling me sister teresa so at the point we started to talk more often because i didn't like have so much friends i actually just had two at that point and sometimes he wanted to talk about how did you manage with that course how did you do this how did you do that how did you do that and at some point i just felt we were talking often and i was telling myself this is not supposed to be however on the side note there was somebody else that i really i would have said if i really liked somebody it would have been this person but a lot of things happened and I kind of cut that person off at some point because I wasn't ready for all of that. Now back to the story was when he had graduated. At this point, I've had a lot of issues at this point, even with this relationship, like this friendship and all of that. I'd had a lot of issues, I had a lot of issues and I wouldn't like really like mention because it has to involve, it involves other persons. So it happened that while um, he was he had graduated and I was in 400 level we were now a bit closer especially with the last um, vacation we had had not like vacation I went out like <laughs> it was like a break from school that I'd gone to my house that's what I meant <laughs> so we had been a little bit closer at this point and many times he really told me that I like you and i told myself i cannot tell you i like you because i cannot lie i feel that that word has a lot of emotions had a lot of things attached but this is somebody i felt was really caring to me this person was really nice to me this person has really like gone over and beyond for me but i wasn't very sure i've never been in a relationship before and at this point i think i was about 21 21 yeah 21 or 20 i don't even remember but in 2020 i was 20 yeah i was 20. It happened that at this point 
um i wasn't ready for anything so i could remember coming back to school and at this point i was now becoming attracted to this person and i was struggling with a lot of other things and at some point i told him what what do you really want with me you know things like that like just to like get things defined if i'm going on if i'm not going on so that i will know that i'm about to make a decision for myself i said okay let us revisit this topic that you've always like mentioned you know things like that and i was like okay at this point i could remember he came back from clarence and he came to my room on a sunday and then he told me okay i want to get married to you that's that's the point that's that's what this is all about and I said, okay, can you give me like a little bit of time? And I remember calling my mom and telling my mom. And my mom was like, are you sure about this? My mom was, she was, she was, she was not, I could remember her voice. She was not really sure. She wasn't really sure. But I guess she didn't, she didn't really, I, I don't know how she must have felt, but she didn't really feel it was something I needed at that point. I spoke to my friends and they were all excited. I mean, I've never been attracted to anybody. I've not mentioned to them that I was attracted to anybody or I want to be in any form of relationship when right I find out yeah. And they were they were excited for me. I, I let my sister know. And after some time I told him, okay, I'm fine with it. This was on the 30th of January 2020. <laughs> and being the fact that I was a leader in church, I called like another leader in church and I told him just in case anybody comes and say i'm meeting i'm seeing this girl with another person this is the whole situation of things and i let him know and things like that and i could remember just a couple of days after this whole thing my school said we're going to go for lockdown you know the coronavirus lockdown and when we went home no no sorry my school was saying we we're going to go for lockdown so we were slowing down on things but it happened that before we went for lockdown there was a warning strike so i was in school but i was not going for classes and this was the period where i felt this relationship was not for me this relationship is not everything i had imagined it to be anyway I was in a point where I'm going to manage it. I was in a point where God is going to fix some things. I was in a point where I had to like go extra. At some point, I literally felt like I was losing my mind. I was becoming so attracted to this person. And at some point, I felt that there was a filtering of lust in it. Because I don't know what was going on in my head. <laughs> But I was still struggling and I was telling myself it's going to be fine. I was calling people there to help me in prayers, to help me in this. But I was really struggling. And I could remember somebody told me that he felt God letting him know about some things about me. And God was telling him that I was finding it so hard to let go of something that he really wants me to let go of at this time. And God was concerned because God was concerned about this because... It usually isn't a problem for me to give up anything. And when he told me this, I said, no. I broke up with this person. And I came back with, to this person again. So when I actually wrote it on TikTok, people would be like, it was easy. And I just like broke up with him once. <laughs> I know it wasn't that easy. <laughs> so after this whole thing happened, I broke up with him. And I came back again. I came back again. <laughs> yeah, I came back again. And... I don't I cannot even count how many times I've told myself I'm gonna break up with him. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but it was like I'm sure my husband would have felt I'm sure he would have felt this guy is really crazy. But I was really crazy because I was just struggling. What does God want me to do? God if told this person, God didn't just let one person another person came and had a dream and said she had a dream about sorry, she had a relation about me, and this is what God was saying. God was not happy with what I was doing, and at this point I was so confused. And then I spoke to my friends, and my friends are Christians, although not the same denomination as myself, but they are Christians. And she one of them told me, If this is what God wants you to do, you really need to confirm these messages. Because my friends were this kind of people that would say, if it is God, my hand no deal. That was the kind of person. That was the kind of friends I had. If it is God, my hand is not there. <laughs> so, I, one of them, I could remember one of them emphasized so much that if 
I've heard these messages. I should hear it for myself because I really liked this guy. But I should hear this message for myself. So while I was still going forth, going back, going sideways, going up, down, and center, the lockdown started and we went home. While I was at home, I kept hearing from God. I kept, I, I didn't like keep hearing or anything. I was still in a relationship with this person. And then I had this dream once where I was with this person in a dream, like in a very clear dream. I'm surprised that I have not forgotten this dream ever since then. Okay, it was like a cafeteria where we were and I am this guy that I was in love with we're going to have a seat so that we're going to eat and the guy went back and then he came again and he so told me that someone that another guy that was sitting someone else that was staring at me that the the person was not was not really happy no no sorry i could remember right now he said that that person told me that i am not longer having time for my husband again now this dream meant something to me because growing up i hear my mom call the holy spirit her spouse she does that a lot and at some point i started doing that i would, I would be praying that the holy spirit is my spouse the holy spirit is my husband the holy spirit is my this i am that kind of person <laughs> so i did that a lot so immediately i had this dream i knew exactly what the problem was that that dream it was saying that the holy spirit sorry that my husband which was the holy spirit that was staring in my eyes was saying that i didn't have any time for him anymore so i told myself i was not going to be speaking to this guy often that i will reduce the speaking then i'll be praying more and more often i tried that but anytime i'm on a call with this guy sometimes it's either so this is how exactly it was it is either i was on a call with him or i was texting him or he was in my head i was actually imagining when we're going to get married how i'm going to have children how i'm going to be working how i'm going to have a car how i'm going to have a house how my house is going to be how my home was being that was all that filled my head and i was really struggling to study my bible not really studying but the fact that even while i'm studying my mind and my spirit is somewhere else my prayers has been channeled to something else like my whole my whole life was clouded with just one person and i was losing my god in it I was losing my God in it. So I waved that dream off and I said I was just going to work on everything. However, something happened. Before now, I always tell myself I was not going to make a mistake in marriage. That was my life. I was never going to make a mistake in marriage. I kept telling myself I was never going to make any mistake in marriage. I was never ever going to make any mistake in marriage. That God was going to help me. This has been my declaration and my prayer even before I went to, even before I really knew God like for myself i will always say things like this i was never going to make a mistake in marriage god was only going to align my spit my step that was what i kept saying to myself that's what i kept praying that's what i kept manifesting that's what i kept declaring at every point in my life i was never going to make a mistake in marriage i was never going to make a mistake in marriage i kept saying that so when it came to this point in my life i said okay and i was going to like restructure we schedule everything i was starting listening to gospel artists i was starting started to listen to gospel gospel sermons so that my mind would be clouded with god again but it wasn't working and every time i hear any revelation any time we are praying i kept telling myself that god oh, don't tell anybody about me oh, oh no god don't tell anybody about me but something god never did was that maybe i'm in a congregation because i'm actually in a little prayer group where the power of God was moving so much that even if you have a grudge in your mind, in your spirit about somebody else, that day, if you come and pray, they will open, everything will open there. So sometimes when I go there, I say, God, can you talk about this thing there? It was never, God didn't bring it as a matter to debate on. God was talking to me to trust him and trust the fact that he was speaking to me at that point in my life. So after I went home, after I went home now and I was dealing with all of this, I started to listen to sermons. But anytime I listened to a sermon that tilted a little bit to obedience and disobedience, heaven and hell, not heaven and hell, anything about dying and eternal life, I was scared of the message. I was scared of I was scared of the eternal life that God has promised me. I was scared because 
Every single time my mind tells me, my spirit tells me, you are in disobedience. This is not what God wants for your life. So this continued happening while we were at lockdown. And at some point I felt really ill, very, very sick. And while I was very sick, I had taken the typhoid drop. In, in fact, they were coming to give me like drip in my house because you know with the lockdown, you cannot like really just go out like that. So I was receiving drip in my house. But my mommy said it wasn't working. She was concerned. She said all these are not working. I'm still like, I'm still the same way I was the first day, even before they started the treatment. And she was really concerned. This was the first time my mommy said I was going to go to for prayers not not like a prayer house but it's like a prayer unit in my church where i attend so we usually have prayers so my mommy was saying i was going to attend that prayers that was the leaders prayers like the elders were making that prayer so she said i was going to attend that prayer and i could remember going in for that prayer and it was time for them to pray for me and i could remember one of the leader that's the head of them all laying his hand on me and then he whispered something to me like he said something to me and he said god said let no man put his hand on your waist in the name that he's going to get married to you but at then he now said i'm concerned because god is not saying anything about your health and that day i went home and i started to think about a dream i had three days before that day so in that dream, I was still in my sick bed. My mommy comes to take care of me while I was sick. I had a dream where I was in a school, my secondary school. And while I wanted to enter the secondary school, like the admin block, I, I met a man, but then I went in and I came out. Now this man was clothed in white garments. He was so clean. When I was coming out again, I hit him like I shrugged his shoulder like we hit ourselves and then he asked me that why did i hit him and i said i'm really very very sorry that my 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 vision is really blue and i cannot see far i could remember telling the man that i cannot see far and that was the reason why i hit him and i'm so sorry and he told me that i have something in my hand that can i give him that thing that when i go and come back I will come and collect it from him because that I'm really not going to see where I'm going to. So I could remember giving to him a hardship. It was a hardship and a diamond. I don't know exactly what does the diamond mean. And all I, I shall give the two to him and he collected it from me. And he told me I should go. That when I come back, I should come and collect it from him. And then when I told my mommy that dream, I remember my mommy saying, nobody will collect your heart. Nobody will collect your life because we didn't discern what this dream was. However, after I've gone and I've been prayed over, that dream came back to my head again. And I could remember in the stillness of my heart, in my mommy's car that day when I was going back home, the Lord said, do it. It was just a still voice. And he said, do it. More like you know exactly what to do. Somewhere in your spirit. Do this and get your peace. God, God was telling me that he will give me my peace as an evidence that this is what he wants for me. <laughs> and while I was home, I picked up my phone and I texted this guy that I really loved so much. That I'd imagined my whole future with. That has not done me any wrong that has changed his lifestyle because of me that has made decisions to in my favor that has made decisions because of me that had see, that that has seen his whole life with me in it and i told him god asked me to break up with you and one thing i wasn't going to do was to hide the fact that it was God that said it to me. I mean, it is my life. If I have chosen to serve a God, and that God that I chose to serve has spoken to me in the way I know that he's the one that spoke to me. It is my life. It is me that is going to be the wife. I said, God has said, I wasn't going to say, I feel like I don't need you anymore. I wasn't going to say, you might beg me out of it. I was going to tell you that a power that was more than me a power that has give that I've given my life to, a power and a God that has been there for me even when you weren't there for me or you didn't even know me, the one that His providence has even allowed our paths to cross. 
the God that I've been taught from when I was born, the God I was baptized into, that the life I live is no longer mine. That is the God I'm telling you. I wasn't really going to say my mommy doesn't like you. My mommy, because basically he's from a different state from myself and my, my family, not my family, my whole community. In fact, my whole state always used to do, we don't used to marry this person. That, but that wasn't my problem. My problem was that God was saying that I couldn't marry you. And I told him, I'm not sure when God is going to let me date. And I'm not sure if he lets me date, it's going to be you. So I'm not telling you to wait for me. My heart is broken, everything. But I must leave you because this is what God has said. I haven't imagined, I cannot imagine you breaking someone's heart, someone's heart and you're the one that is more broken. <laughs> I don't even know how to exp explain that. So when I broke up with him, he cried. I could remember he sent me a video when he was crying. And I deleted that video when we were even <laughs> like months and almost a year later. Uh, he was crying. He, he said he didn't, he didn't know. Like now his hands are tied. He's a Christian as well. So it's not a matter of anything. It's a matter of another person has spoken. God has spoken and you know, things like that. And I broke up with him. But the story did not end there needed to mention at this point that I posted that video on TikTok. I didn't know that up to 46,000 people would ever view that video. I actually thought that, let me just post it, just let people know, my my followers or rather my friends on TikTok, just know about what I passed through and it might bless them. And then the first day, no, it was just like nobody viewed it. And I woke up like the third day and I'm like, oh, 300 and something people had moved i've just viewed it and before you know it just kept going on and on and on like that and i just really needed to say thank you a lot to everyone who's come from tiktok thank you <laughs>